problem with the sea cucumber fishery is that there is a lot of governance issues and it's the way that many uh, people in very remote communities right across the African, Asian and Pacific region make their livelihoods and so the trade itself or the catch side of their side of things is relatively simple. It gets complicated when we do go through them selling to a buyer who sells to an exporter who sells to an importer. And so there is issues along that value and market chain. Um, and while CITES listing can have um, a benefit to uh, sustainability and, and conservation measures. There is also the consideration of the impact that it has on national agencies both in the fisheries sector and the, and the conservation sector because they have to now commit resources and you know, conduct on detrimental findings and there is a large lack of capacity amongst many national fisheries uh, agencies and conservation agencies to manage the society's process. Sea cucumber play a very great ecological role which we cannot ignore and um, it plays ecological, it plays uh, a social uh, economic role and uh, that means because it's an export commodity if it's listed and the trade is regulated then it means there are people who will lose a livelihood but again um, given that uh, we have other countries that are also uh, neighboring and doing uh, sea cucumber trade. We find a lot of illegal um, trade that can come across countries and, and, and you find um, a lot of um, smuggling of, of trade. So even if we ban no fishing, then we might find sea cucumber from Kenya being smuggled into an neighboring country and, and... One of the benefits that um, the expert panel for the sea cucumbers had was the collection of a long time series of data uh, dating back to the early 1990s that had been collected and collated by SPC. And we were luckily able to have George Aguari from SPC who is the invertebrate scientist and is very capable in, in using statistical databases, especially R. My involvement with the panel includes looking at data, essentially data that hasn't been published but is part of fishery stock assessments within the Pacific. I look at these numbers and I assess whether or not there's been some trends or changes in catches, changes in population abundance or population sizes and see whether or not those numbers are consistent with the listing criteria of size. You know, bring this together into one complete package. Through this we end up assessing uh, information across 23 uh, range states, many from the Pacific, uh, five from, uh, six from the Asian, Southeast Asian region and five from the East African region. Those were put into the biological parameters for the, the CITES criteria. Um, so yes, it was uh, an extremely um, busy exercise to try and collate that and it was very good the way that uh, FAO and also the members of the expert panel were able to reach out to uh, range state agencies and collect information so I think uh, overall um, the assessment is, is, is very good.